Good morning. Good afternoon. Hi there. Hi, y'all. I hope you're doing well. Hi. Waving back. <laughs> Hi, Peter. I hope everyone's doing okay today. Um, we're just gonna be working with our mats today. And hi, Boston. Mats and some kind of a weight. I'm going to get my trusty hand weights, my eight pound and my two pound, and we'll see how I'm feeling once we get there. Hi, Ashley. So just get some kind of a weight. I have I have these little hand weights, um, but you can use a book or bottle of detergent or a can, um, jug of some kind. Hi there. Hi Jenna. Hi Matt. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see familiar names and. Now you're becoming familiar in your Instagram worlds, but hopefully someday we'll all meet on the other side. I dream about that. Good morning, beautiful woman. Good morning, Steph. Hi. Um, over this next minute as we were in the 9.30 Eastern time minute, so we'll it's just about 9.31. So we'll just get our mats and then some kind of a weight, a hand weight of some kind. Um, and as I was just saying, if you just joined, it can be anything heavy. It could be a detergent bottle or a jug of some kind or a large book. Um, and you can also do all of this without having a weight too. I am definitely feeling the social distancing effects at this point. I didn't, I have to say, I was a little slow on the uptake or maybe just kind of in shock. But, um, but I've been speaking to, to lots of folks in and out of the art world and uh, seems to be a common sentiment and there's, I think, something really profound in that, that we're all collectively feeling something together. Um, but, but I know that it's hard and um, we're missing touch and missing connections. Um, so I'm trying to find some solutions for that in our work, in our class, not only through really hard effort every day, and I feel like that rigor um, and so many of the teachers on Movement for Hope give that, that kind of rigor that lets you control what you can control. And then also um, finding ways to anchor ourselves, secure ourselves, bring contact to ourselves. Because that's what we've got right now. All right. First thing today, we're going to just inhale and bring the shoulders way up to the ears. You can be sitting, you can be standing. If this is comfortable for you, you can be there. We're going to hang out here and imagine, I keep reading these bat books with one of my kids. And so I'm looking at all these bats hanging from their feet and hanging from trees. Imagine that um, you're hanging from the points of your scapula. Oh, stay here one more moment, bring tons of tension and energy to that area, and then we're gonna let it drop with our next exhale. Oh. Same thing now, reaching the hands forward, wherever you are, sitting, standing, kneeling, 
We're gonna reach as far forward as we can. Reaching, 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 reaching more than you thought you could. And then with our next inhale, we're gonna float up. Let the arms widen. <sighs> the arms come to the sides. And then we're gonna bring the palms up towards the ceiling. And we're gonna reach kind of prow of the Titanic style. Reach the arms actively behind us, opening up the sternum. Let me get some music on because my children's accompaniment is not so joyous today. Um, it will be momentarily because things change in a moment for them. With your next exhale release down, and we're going to do that one more time. This time we're gonna get into that by bringing the palms forward and I'm sealing the length of the pinkies to the wrists. I'm gonna reach the arms forward. We did this last week in a few different orientations. Um, as we're reaching, when I have to, I'm gonna seal the palms together. And then when I have to, I'm gonna reach the arms wide. And we're gonna come back into that same position we were just in reaching, I'm just in a funny position right now just so you can see me. But we're, we're creating this openness, this length through the fingertips. Imagine you're 10 feet tall, these huge wings opening up. You can close your eyes if you want to to bring some sensation to this. Big energetic light beaming through all 10 fingers. With your next exhale, release down. Whew. And just a bit of a stretch on the, the head. So, Take your hand all the way across, Vogue style, and gentle stretch. Take the other hand, teapot, <laughs> half teapot, half Vogue, and reach away. Oh, she's cleaning. Hi, hey, sweetie. Watch uh, Come back up. We're gonna recreate that stretch now without using the hand. We're still gonna keep our teapot hand, reaching the crown of the head away from our fingertips. And then back, other side now, both hand, teapot. Back up. Vogue hand can relax. Reaching away. Mm. Bring the hands to the chest. Feel some of that openness that you just gained, some of that big strength wide positions, open neck, open heart, open throat, anchoring the hands, weighting the hands onto the chest. And over the next couple of breaths, allow the hands onto the chest to compress slightly the sternum. So you can bring the head down as you need to. As you inhale, you're gonna feel the air expanding into the back and side of the rib cage. So you can curve forward as much as you need to so that you can really feel that expansion. And then come up high. Whatever position you're in, we're gonna swing the legs out. Come on to the back. Take a, a right leg into the end, give it a big jostle. A really strong shake. Ah, some sound to accompany it. Burning leg. So not just like shaking out the cobwebs. Not just that. We are trying to get your foot off of your leg. We're Everything you've got, five, four, three, two, one. You can count out loud with me. 
if you're in a place where you can speak out loud. And just let the sound vibrations shake the inside of the body. Other side. <sighs> Feel how this is different about over the length of the breath for yourself. The top of the exhale versus the bottom of it. <sighs> and five, four, stronger, more, faster, burning. Two, one, release down. Little rock side to side. Stay quick with this, dynamic with this right now. Okay. In your next rock, you're gonna snuggle one hand. It doesn't matter which. You're gonna snuggle one hand underneath your back on the floor so that you can feel, it's right about here, so that you can feel your bottom vertebrae. Um, your sacrum, perhaps, you can feel that along the back of your hand. And you're gonna take the other hand and you're gonna put it right over the place where your hand is. So you're creating this kind of sandwich. The bread are your hands and the meat is your belly. <laughs> All right, exhale and inhale. And on your next exhale, you're just going to allow this area between the two hands to condense slightly. The image that I've been using a lot recently is like you're pressing out a wet sponge. Um, so we're not, it's on both sides that we're feeling this support. We're not sucking the stomach in. It's not trying to make ourselves smaller. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to feel this support that encases the pelvis and the low spine with the exhale. Feel how you can also, we're releasing with the inhale right now, with the exhale, perhaps you can get even more of that deep scooped transverse action when you draw the pelvic floor up. So the pelvic floor, you can imagine these striations of sort of this basket weave, this like jellyfish, and it's coming up this way in this orientation right now. Imagine this jellyfish buoying up. This is gonna be with your exhale. Feel all of the support. The next time that you exhale, you're gonna lift one leg up into tabletop. Inhale here. Exhale lower. Even if you have to use your own hands as anchors right now, we're gonna really let ourselves, as we do this on the other side, moving with the exhale, really let ourselves feel how much freedom we can find in the, in the femur bone inside that hip socket. Just being able to hinge without any tension, with complete ease, because we're anchoring down the rest of our structure. Okay, take that, those hands out, sneak them by the sides. Bring the knees up into tabletop now. Once you're in tabletop, you're going to determine if you're in a neutral spine where you still have that natural curve that we were just in, or if you're gonna work in an imprinted spine where you lay down like a big thick chain the length of your vertebrae on the ground. Bring two hands now on top of the belly, whichever you've chosen. Exhale, feel the transverse connection. Feel the pelvic floor, hands back down. So we're, we're finding that same support. Now it's going to be consistent support. We're not going to release with the inhale because we're maintaining this tabletop structure. Just let one leg float down and up. The rest of my structure is staying completely stable. So I've been citing and quoting my teachers, all, so many of my teachers over the past couple of weeks. As Kelly Kane would say, it's not a little bit of movement. It's not just like a minor shift, it's zero movement in the pelvis and in the spine as we're working in this way at the top of our class. Trying to imprint in our nervous system, our muscle memory, this engagement of the TA and the pelvic floor. Because now we're gonna get into the stomach series and hopefully we've fired those muscles up enough. Tuck the chin, get your funny soft Republican blah, 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 double chin here, blah, blah. and then keeping the curve at the back of the neck. We're going to lift the head up. 
So you have a nice light head. Left hand on the right knee, right hand on top of the right ankle. Extend the left leg up to the ceiling. As you lower that leg down, you're gonna go as low as you can, keeping the structure of the back, sacrum, pelvis, exactly as is. If you go any lower, you were to compromise that. And change. Pay particular attention to your exhale, feeling that connection down that we just found with the transverse and pelvic floor. Imagine your two hands supporting your pelvis right now. That condensed sponge can be so helpful to imagine another force anchoring you down. It's something that we talk so much about um, in choreography or when we're, we're getting coached to imagine a force that's happening to you. And that imagery really translates to the quality of the movement and how you can make sense of it in your own body. That you have this like buoyant vice right now at the pelvis and the spine. Two knees into the chest, hands behind the head. We're gonna go right into this variation we've been working on this week, a lot of you know. So we're gonna come up into a diagonal. You can inhale here if you want or you can breathe continuously. Exhale, if you're gonna follow my breath dictation. Inhale as the legs curl in, we're peeling just the tip of the tailbone off the floor. Exhale as we reach back out to our diagonal with an inhale. This part, the scooping down, is quite a lot of challenge on that structure of the pelvis low spine. So that's where you probably want to exhale, or focus on that scooped, connecting, transverse pelvic floor strength. This peeling up here, we're gonna to try to do without any momentum, just by using that chain of the core. Pelvic floor, transverse, rectus, abdominis, the six pack. Laying it down. Two more. Ah! Last one, keep breathing through this. Whew. Bring the knees into tabletop, hands on tops of the knees. So you're holding your kneecaps. Give yourself a little jostle. Uh, make sure you're not holding any extra tension in the head neck. Okay, a little bit of preparation for our uh, crisscross and then also for the mermaid and we've been trying to work a little bit more in spirals. They're detoxifying and they're also working with imbalances and asymmetry which is perhaps in our life right now which has just been, everyone's just so shrunk our functional activities. I'm finding that doing some more twists and spirals is necessary. So we're going to bring the legs back into tabletop position. I'm really sealing the legs together here now pretty actively so the adductors, the center midline is super, super strong. Feeling the transverse engage, feeling the pelvic floor engage. Now all of this unit is staying as is as I reach my legs towards the side. My shoulders glued to the ground. I'm going to inhale to center. So the range is dictated by how far you can go, keeping this unit completely intact, no sliding of the knees, and keeping that shoulder adhered to the ground. Exhale to twist, inhale back up. Exhale twist. If you want to take this slower, because since we are spiraling, twisting a whole lot less, most of us, it can be a rather shocking to the system I was finding last week as I was reintegrating this into my practice. So you could probably hang out or take a few breaths in each of these twists. If you want to make this a little more challenging, increase the load, lengthen the legs up, same thing. Right now we're going to keep that shoulder, that opposite shoulder glued to the floor. So now in whatever orientation you've chosen, tabletop or long legs. Feel how the twist is happening above the pelvis. 
below the scapula. Sense for yourself where in the trunk the twist is happening and note that for yourself. Do this again a couple of times each direction and try now, since we've gotten a little bit warmed up into it, to exhale on your reach side, inhale as you zip up to center. Exhale as you reach side, inhale to center. Last one. Knees down. Take a little uh, sway, rock side to side, whichever allows you to feel like you can let go of tension in the front of the hips. Okay. Knees into the chest, hands behind the head, tuck the chin, lift the head and scapula up off the ground. Immediately connect down with the navel towards the transverse, whew, or into the transverse, into the pelvic floor. Feel that connection. Reach two legs up towards the ceiling. The right leg's gonna move towards you as the left leg moves away. And then we're simply going to change. So what a lot of us wanna do is have the change up towards the ceiling and just lower one leg and lower the other one, which is fine if you're working with any uh, compromises in your spine or you really wanna decrease the amount of weight or load on it. But if you're not working with those compromises, you're gonna challenge yourself to cross the legs as low as that diagonal you found before that challenges the stability of your pelvis but doesn't compromise it. Breathing through this today. And we're just gonna coordinate a little bit by flexing as the legs cross, pointing as they open. So there's no stops to this movement. Whew. Bring one more vertebrae off the floor. One more rib off. Wide elbows. Plug the belly button down. Ah. Knees into the chest into happy baby and stretch the legs out just getting into our first adductor stretch of the day so be easy with that but we'll use that range in a moment <sighs> all right variation on the one we just did so exhale connect transverse pelvic floor Soft front of the chin, two legs up. So we're gonna go right leg up, left leg down, left leg, my hands are both behind my head, I'm just looking at you. Then keeping the pelvis exactly as is, the legs are gonna come all the way around and back. And change, and change. We take this a little bit quicker. We're breathing through this. If you find that you're holding your breath anywhere, then have a little bit more of a classical breath pattern. Exhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Yeah, so that you don't hold the breath, especially the end of the exhale where you can recruit the most whew, of those fibers, those deep, deep intrinsic muscles. I might have lost my sequence here because I was babbling on. Sorry if I confused anybody. It's simply two switches. Whew. All the way around, huh. two switches, huh. all the way around, last one, all the way around, huh. I'm going to have a really old school ballet <laughs> ab exercise next. I was talking yesterday about how I've sort of eliminated the hundred, hundreds from my repertoire because of my own stuff, my own feelings about it and what it does to my body. But I think that this exercise and a couple of others are nice replacements because some of you do really enjoy it. Tuck the chin. I know one of you out there named Jenna really enjoys it. Lift the legs up towards the ceiling. Exhale, navel connects down. 
Think of that sponge. Rotate the legs out so your heels are, are kissing each other, really strongly pressing in towards one another. And then we're gonna change. All of us know this one. Old school. Uh, and up. I'm trying to have a bit of a circular action. And for me, what that does is it really forces me to wake up the transverse and the pelvic floor to stabilize because the more movement that's going on in this, the, the more you're challenging that structure. And we want to be challenging the structure. But if you do it, you know, you can also just do these sort of beats back and forth, focusing on the adductors and focusing on your abs. We're just coming up and down, a little elevator action. Whew. <sighs> a few more sets. Everybody get your scapula off the ground. Nice wide elbows. <sighs> Navel connecting down. One more trip down and up. And the knees into the chest. If you can cross the feet and hold on to opposite feet, it's great. I think I've taught that maybe <laughs> twice, but it's something I do in my own warm up and my own like abdominal work, core work. Um, I guess because it, I, I did it so long and funny warm ups and ballet training, I just, I have abandoned it. Switch legs, other side. <sighs> Knees into the chest, tuck the chin, lift the head and scapula up off the ground, reach the right leg long. Belly button down, transverse engaged, scapula off the ground, upper arm off the ground. Find that position on the other side, scapula off the ground, upper arm off the ground, and change. Now, I'm gonna do the unthinkable. I'm going to slow us down after these next two. So we're going to go change. Whoo! Oh. Elbow opening up wide to the side. A few more. Oh. Oh, knees into the chest, a few breaths, any neutralizer you wish, the head roll side to side. <sighs> Rock right up to sitting. A moment ago, I had us in this position as our kind of neutralizer break, I'm holding on to opposite feet. We're gonna do that. We're gonna roll to our back, switch the feet, and roll up. Really simple. It's rolling like a ball. The only difference is because of this switch, the shape becomes a little bit more dynamic. One more each side. Last one. <sighs> Come nice and high, teetering on your balance. <sighs> You're staying balanced. Onto the back. Uh, get your weight if you have it. I'm gonna use both. I have a heavy one and a light one. Um, and I've had quite the week, so I'm gonna, in terms of some stress, so I'm going to make sure that I connect uh, to what my neck is feeling and my head, and I, of course, ask that you do the same. Um, feet flat on the floor, 
Come up nice and high, and then you're gonna roll under. You're gonna roll under by tucking under, connect to the pelvic floor, the transverse, rolling back until, I roll back until I feel that I can still maintain the support of my low spine, so I'm not falling into the spine and just hanging on by my psoas. So see what that is for you. It might be quite high up, and you might need to have a longer back, but I, I do prefer to have a, a tuck at my pelvis. So here we are, and we're gonna twist and twist. If you have something that's um, not like a uniform weight, not like this, but that has liquid in it perhaps, or contents, or is hard to hold, then that's wonderful because it makes it more dynamic. If you have something like what I have, you, you can almost think of tossing the weight back and forth so that it's more dynamic in its distribution through the exercise. A few more. Stop in center. This is where I'm going to shift to my really light weight. And lift up. Three more. Come up. <sighs> Take any tension out of the front of the hips that you might have garnered. And this next round, we're gonna get a little harder for ourselves. Uh, soles of the feet are gonna come together like this. Same thing now, curling under. So now we're not going to be able to recruit our hip flexors to help us. Um, so if you find that you're doing this, then you got to come up a little bit perhaps, or just stay here without the weight. Here we go. Notice how much your hip flexors want to help out. They're like the trapezius of the low body. They just want to do everything. Think about that spiral that we found a moment ago in crisscross and earlier when we were doing our supine twist. So we're twisting from above the navel. Huh. And into the chest. Up a little quicker. Keep breathing. Three, two, one. Come forward. Bring a, a hand to one knee. And get a little sassy shoulder to oppose it. <sighs> Other side. It's time for the mermaid. We're gonna do a whole mermaid today. Um, so, I'm gonna move these off. I'm going to lengthen my mat towards you. And you can do the same or lengthen sort of whatever cushion you have. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not especially bony and so I, this doesn't bother me but I know from teaching this for a long time that um, those bonier folks uh, can find this really difficult. So pad up however you need to. Um, and we'll start back. I'll talk us through. We're gonna do it a few times, uh, rolling forward and back. And so if you've never done it before, then you can watch us the first time through. Um, and yeah, I have, I have like a, a strong urge to bring someone into my live video to <laughs> demonstrate this, but it's okay. We'll get through and you can see how I need to modify it perhaps. Um, but maybe one of these days I can, 
I can bring someone in to assist. So we're on the backs. We're gonna reach up into our teaser position and let's not neglect this trip up. So as we're reaching away from our center, think about some of those earlier exercises we're doing in the stomach series. I'm imagining that I have this elastic between my hands and my feet, scooping out. So we're, we're not gonna be like this. We're still scooping out at the uh, pelvis, navel connecting back body. And now I'm gonna continue that scoop as I roll. And as I roll, I'm gonna reach my arms really actively away from my legs so I don't funk anywhere. So coming onto the side, hopefully arm and leg are off the ground. Now we're gonna come onto the belly. Hopefully arms and legs are still off the ground. Slow motion, rolling. Here I am on the other side, and that's gonna bring me back up. Yeah, a little bit of information for myself there because I landed not flat, so that just means that I was out of sync in my upper and lower halves, and that's okay. Because we can learn from there. So now we're going back to the other side and really trying to maintain the same velocity throughout. I kathunked, but my excuse is that I bumped into my furniture. So we're gonna do this a few more times. Come onto the back two more times through. There's this moment that I was finding this week. Um, from here, this is the hard part. I really have to kind of take the plunge, the slow motion plunge, and reach away from my legs. That's kind of the, the risky part. And then from here, I'm gonna reach my feet and my hands so strongly away from my center. Keep reaching, especially the back leg, back arm, are gonna reach us up and around, and we're gonna come up. If you wanna modify, if you're just joining, you can take one hand there for that sort of hardest of parts and help yourself up. You can also hold on to your own legs. Here we go, other side, rolling back. I feel like this is also a really nice exercise for endurance because uh, there's so much at work and it's rather long. It's not too repetitive because we can only do a few of them. That last part there is what I really need to work on. It's very different for me post baby number two. This part, really finding all of that connection there for my whole core, which is nice because it's making me work in a different way and appreciate how difficult this exercise is. Oh, one more time. Reaching up, 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 up. Keep reaching up, 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 up. That's my favorite moment, and this one right here. I love those transitions out of the back body. Ah. Last time. Think about the half mermaids that we're doing. That's where we are right now. So if you've been doing those, that's that last part that I'm finding so hard. I'm finding it eluding me again. Take a rest. Let's actually take a rest in the second position so we can get into some fun stuff in a moment. Um, yeah, I've been finding that when I do the full mermaid, suddenly I like forget all of the stuff we've been working in in the half. Um, I think I get excited and intimidated by it. <sighs> you can lie yourself down here, take whatever modifications you want to, if you want to stretch to the side or another side. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna shift. You can stay where you're at, obviously. <laughs> um, I'm gonna shift this way. There we go. 
And when you're ready, come out of your, your second position. You're gonna come onto your side and anchor your uh, hand onto your ankle. This way. From here, you're gonna bring that elbow right in towards you. It might even fold a little bit behind you to find your side stretch. And as we've been playing with in these classes, it's another sort of closed loop, so I keep trying to find and pay attention and spend time in kind of these closed circuits that we're creating. So right now we have this circuit of hand to leg right here. Um, it's looping. Good. Take a hold of that foot now. Reach it in front of you. So I'm on my haunches. Flex through the ankle if you can. And if you wanna take a bend through that knee, you can do that. And then lengthen through. And as we do this, we're just gonna try to bring our torso closer to our leg. Finding some length here. Okay, come onto the back and you can keep that right leg in your hand. Left leg is gonna come long in front of you. Take that arm to the, uh, your arm foot connection to the ceiling and then open it up to the side. We're gonna do this just a couple of times. Feel how you can indulge and you get a really nice stretch there and that's great to indulge for a moment. But then feel when you kind of, uh, Restack, come back into your alignment, and bring the leg back. So let yourself indulge for the first couple, opening up, enjoying that big yawn oh, of the psoas. So nice. But now it's time to get down to business. We're going to keep this structure as is heavy, heavy, heavy left leg. If you've got weighted blankets on it, sometimes I bring, I take my hand off the floor and I bring it to my leg. It doesn't, you know, I'm not actually able to hold it into place, but it can remind me to do that. Okay, hands to the back of the hamstring. We're gonna climb up for tree. We're gonna climb up, 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 up. Swing the leg open, swing it back and down, 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 down. One more time. Maybe this is a good place for you to work from. If you wanna make this a little harder, we're going to take that leg, swing it to the outside, and now we're gonna try to roll down, but we're gonna keep that leg to the side. We've done this a few times recently. I have definitely not mastered this exercise that I've, this challenge that I've created because I always could thunk right there. But trying so hard <laughs> to imagine a day when I don't, and I know some of you do not need that to thunk. Now on the way up, I'm gonna bring my hand to the inside of my hamstring. I'm gonna come up the same way I did a moment ago in tree, and then up. Come down. Come on, Isadora. Not so bad. I shouldn't say bad. Not so kathunky. And then up. Good. Swing to the other side. Anchor. Take a side stretch. Mm. Okay, bring that leg in front. And a stretch for yourself. Whew. trees, pawing up and pawing down. And I have, I love tree because it's really, we can find this beautiful sequencing in, and then we're using our own leg as our assistance to come up. Uh, swing the leg out, and back, and down. 
I'm going to do that one more time and maybe this is a good exercise for you to stay in if you don't want to go for the side tree. Okay. I'm still trying to do this and I, I sort of feel that I'm actually not quite ready for it, but I know that some of you are, so I'm just going for it. <sighs> oh, that kathunk is big today. Sometimes it's, it's less than others. Okay, here we go. Up. Mm. And down. And I'm not, sometimes we do this and we do the tree up and down. I'm not doing that today because I do want us to feel, we to have a gauge of where we're at with it. We'll try it again in a week or two. Of course, you can try it on your own and become a pro at it. And then I can live feed you in and you can demonstrate. <sighs> All right. Enough of that. Come on to hands and knees, little wag of the tail, reorient yourself here. <sighs> Reach the right leg back behind you. We'll just warm up into our planks by doing some four points. And in these four points, we're gonna kind of, let's check the time. We're gonna kind of dance them out. Oh good. So I'm going prance and I'm dancing this, circling up, keeping that structure as is. Same with the other side. See? how much height you can get in that foot. It will really wake up all those fibers of the glutes. We're not taking this mobility, or finding this mobility, I should say, in the low back. So the low back trunk is super, super stable, not moving. Last one, stay up. Stay here. Now, left leg's gonna curl up and down. And lengthening, curling, uncurling, down. One more each side. Mm. Lower those elbows down. <sighs> Same thing. Lift, curl, extend, down, lift, curling. Trying to wake up the whole posterior chain. Reach the hips up, hang out the dolphin for a moment. Oh, breathe here, heavy head. back behind you. Extend the left arm in front. We're going to seesaw back and forth. I'm going to keep this midline super strong as you tip back and forth. Now we're going to do a few more of those. If you want to make this a little harder, come back into plank. Same thing. I'm going to try to do two more. Shake the head out. 
Nod. Bring the hands to the back of the skull. Some gentle traction. Pulling the skull away. Oh. Nice squat here. Find your weights again. Make myself a little higher. There we go. Just look. I didn't check the time. Okay, good. So, here we are. I'm gonna take you out of that weird orientation and just put you all right up here. Hi. Okay. Weight in hand. We're going to come onto our knees. And we're going to try to maintain our height as we come into our low squat. Think of this like kind of like the four points that we were just doing when we were in plank. So I'm as soon as I bring my foot, your left foot and knee to this position, I'm going to wake up the whole posterior chain, my entire core. I'm going to plant my other leg and then down and down. And based on what's good for you, you can take this, if you need to take this slightly more rotated out, you just wanna have a nice alignment of the knee hip foot. Oh, whatever that can be for you. For some people, it's gonna be more parallel or a narrower position. I'm trying not to do is what I just did, which is kind of come up and around, where I'm just using my placement, my body weight to do this. So instead, trying to maintain this like space, a space hold of your spine. I was doing this a lot the first few weeks and it got easier and it's gotten harder because I haven't been doing it. <sighs> but maybe you have. <sighs> a few more. Just needing some warmth, fire in the center this Saturday. <sighs> Last one. Stay here, stay low. <sighs> Come to standing. Keep your weight in hand. If you need to switch to something lighter, you can do that or like grab a pillow or a smaller book, something. I'm gonna go for this today. So we're gonna find this hinge on our leg right now. The only two things that we wanna think about First, my, my working leg, my leg in the air, is going to move as far back as it can while keeping this structure as is. So it's, it's not gonna be able to go so far back, but immediately I'll feel that, post, that side of the posterior chain wake up. This, now, next movement, only happening inside the hip socket. Here, I'm hinging down. I'm keeping this leg bent, so that I can feel that connection of the glutes and hamstring. I'm holding this weight here. And we're gonna try to place the weight, or touch down, I should say. Touch down at each number. We're not letting go of the weight today. Making it a little harder for ourselves. I am changing the weight into my hands. So we just went, we were about 12 o'clock, about 1.30, now we're three o'clock. We're going for 4.30. And just now I did the thing that I don't want us to do, which is go here. So we have movement here, no movement here. Keeping that line stable of the back foot to the crown of the head. Six o'clock. Keep waking up that glute and hamstring. It's gonna not wanna come with you. Mm. We're at nine o'clock, almost there, almost there. One more, 10.30. Stay on that leg. You can 
do whatever you want to with this weight. Let it be dynamic as we experience this tree trunk of our leg into the ground. And we're just gonna take the next minute or half minute to play with that really grounded tree trunk, holding our weight in our hand. So we still have this sense of all of those supports from the pubic bones, the hip points, back body, the spirals that we woke up before, crown of the head. Ah. Okay, other side right away. Find that position first of the, the working leg here, and then we're just hinging head of the femur bone to 12 o'clock. And we'll go counterclockwise now. Whew. Some of you might be really enjoying reaching farther out, a different range of movement. We're trying to keep this leg, your standing leg, as stable as possible. And that means for me, that means I have a micro bend to start and I'm gonna keep that micro bend throughout. For some of you, you might need more of a bend and then you're gonna try to keep that, like you're in a, a ski boot type of situation. I think that was uh, 7.30 and now here we are at six o'clock. Oh. Four thirty. Whoa. Not so pretty, huh? <laughs> Maybe some of you can do this with a little more grace. Ah. <sighs> uh. One more time. Ah. Uh. Okay. Here now, experiencing this nice ease. Oh, my battery's low. There we go. Kick it back on. Feeling the ease in the hip, challenging the structure of that standing leg. Whoa. Let this be sort of dynamic, fun, falling off of your center. All right, put that weight down. <sighs> Take a nice wide second position. Okay, good. Nice wide second. Reach the hands down the back. <sighs> Opening up in the clavicle, feeling that fire. Again, pelvic floor transverse supporting you. And we're gonna hop up to standing. Release the arms. One, two, three. Come into a lunge with the right foot forward. I'll do this closer to you. <sighs> I'm gonna take my back bend today the same way, that same position of the hands that we were doing at the beginning of class, because I think we need our Kate Winslet Titanic moment, all of us right now. So I'm gonna scoop my hands up. Keep reaching until you have to seal the palms together. I'm lengthening that leg back as much as I can. I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna reach super dynamically. So much um, energy through all 10 fingers, through my front knee, through my back heel. <sighs> I'm up to standing as gracefully as you can. And right into the other side. <sighs> Bringing the palms up when you need to, seal the palms together. And then open. <sighs> Light from all fingertips from your sternum, crown of the head, chin, nose, eyebrows. <sighs> 